The time now is 7.46. This morning, Republicans are scrambling to rearrange the schedule at the GOP National Convention in St. Paul. That's after organizers decided to scale back activities yesterday because of the concern over Hurricane Gustav. First Lady Laura Bush and Cindy McCain spoke to delegates to encourage them to help out with hurricane, uh, hurricane relief efforts. And much of the buzz out of the convention was over the disclosure by John McCain's vice presidential running mate, Sarah Palin, that her 17-year-old unmarried daughter is pregnant. Mark Curtis joins us live this morning from uh, St. Paul. Good morning, Mark. Ross, good morning. Welcome back. Uh, when, uh, before we talk about uh, Sarah Palin, let me uh, just talk about what's going to happen at the convention today. It looks like they're going to go back to politics as usual. Yeah, they want to get back to normal here. Obviously, they had to really dial it down the last couple of days because of the threat of Hurricane Gustav hitting the Gulf Coast. Now that the storm has uh, subsided somewhat and the damage is not as severe as uh, they anticipated, they're going back to convention mode here, full bore. President Bush will address the convention tonight. He will not, though, be here in the Twin Cities. He will address the delegates via satellite from Washington, D.C. But they're trying to pretty much get back on schedule here, get back on track. Do you find that all the Republicans are a little relieved? The president will be talking about uh, by satellite and there's even a possibility Vice President Cheney won't even show up. Yeah, I tell you what, some uh, Republicans were telling me Friday, or I mean as early as Sunday uh, when I got here, that they were a little bit relieved that the president and vice president uh, weren't going to be here in person. They understand these are two men who are very unpopular with the American public and uh, in some quarters in the Republican Party. And they just simply said it's John McCain's time, it's his turn. He needs to be in the spotlight, not the president or vice president. So this will certainly uh, you know, bring that back up a little bit with the president addressing via the satellite, but it's certainly not the same as him being here in person. Well, I imagine the big story in St. Paul is the selection of Sarah Palin as the running mate there. How well did John McCain know her before he made the choice? Well, that is a matter of some debate right now. The McCain camp says that it sent uh, some 40 people, including attorneys, to Alaska to vet her, to look into her background and so forth. The McCain campaign is insisting that uh, it knew about uh, the, the teenage pregnancy of her daughter and uh, as well as uh, some other disclosures, the DUI conviction of her husband 22 years ago. Uh, but there are others who are wondering whether the McCain camp did its homework and, and should have known more, perhaps, about this investigation now into an ethics a charge in Alaska that the governor may face. So there are some questions about whether she was vetted adequately. Yeah, well, we're hearing that the, uh, the campaign now is sending what they're calling a jump team, maybe they've sent it already, to Alaska uh, to learn more about her. This is after the fact. Well, look, in any time somebody becomes a candidate uh, for, for national office, especially someone who is as unknown as Sarah Palin, uh, they're going to turn over every rock and look behind every closed door and see if there's any surprises out there they can find. Again, the McCain camp is saying that, you know, she was uh, full disclosure. She told them everything that was possibly a landmine in this campaign. And uh, nonetheless, they are still sending more people to Alaska. They're going to go through all the newspaper clippings, all the public filings and uh, uh, you know, they've already found out that she had a she got caught fishing once without a license. I mean, people chuckle at that, but that's the extent to which they look uh, uh, at these candidates. Obviously, somebody like Joe Biden, who's been a well-known public figure for 36 years, he's been vetted a lot more than someone like Sarah Palin, who's an unknown. Well, McCain's campaign manager, Steve uh, Schmidt, yesterday really lashed out at the media. He said that uh, he he called it offensive and demeaning, the coverage and the questions from reporters regarding this news story about uh, Sarah Palin um, that might work in her favor. Well, and it might work in her favor, and, and the fact that Barack Obama even came out and said the children of the candidates should be off limits in these campaigns is another sign. You know, this is this is a difficult issue for both sides of this because no longer are you talking about an abstract political issue of teenage pregnancy and abortion. All of a sudden, this is a real issue with a real person and a teenage girl who happens to be the daughter of one of the candidates. And the Democrats have to be very careful, too, because if they start leveling criticism at Sarah Palin for being so for abstinence only programs, it may look like they're actually attacking her daughter, which yeah. to a lot of people on both sides of the aisle is very unseemly. So Barack Obama was probably, uh, you know, uh, cho chose his words carefully yesterday when he said the kids ought to be off limits. All right, Mark, good talking with you this morning.
Mark Curtis Thanks, Live Russ. and uh, St. Paul, and you can go to markcurtismedia.com.